Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one because I'm going to be talking about beauty products that I personally feel are really overhyped. I love these kind of videos because sometimes people rave about products just to kind of go along with the hype. So I kind of like to obtain some different opinions. Now these are products that some of you might really enjoy and I'm not saying that these products are bad. They just either weren't for me or I just don't think they're as good as everyone says they are. So please don't get offended if I mention a product that you're absolutely obsessed with. It's all just opinions and it's just makeup, you know what I mean? I had some errands to run today and I am not gonna do that. So I figured I would film this instead. We are currently getting a snowstorm. I'm looking at my window now and the snow is just coming down and I don't really feel comfortable driving so I'm gonna stay in today and just be productive filming instead. Also one more thing before I get into it I just want to say thank you guys so much for the love on my eyeshadow palette organization video. If you haven't seen it I'll link it in the cards. I still don't know what side it's on. I should probably figure that out. But yeah that video got a ton of views. I guess you guys really like organization videos and the feedback was great. The video was pretty well received so I'm gonna do my lipsticks next. So if you want to see me organize and declare clutter my lipsticks. I have a lot of them. Make sure to subscribe, hit the button down below, and I will upload that probably next. I think that one's going to be even more satisfying than my eyeshadow palette video because I just have so many lipsticks and lipsticks expire so much quicker so I'm probably going to get rid of a lot more than the eyeshadow palettes. Anyway, enough rambling from me. Let's get on to the products that I don't feel are worth the hype. I'll scooch over so I can put my pictures here as always. So I'm going to start off with the product that kind of inspired this whole video. I have this product. I just finished it up and when I was using up the last little bit of it I thought wow that product really wasn't worth the hype that everyone gave it. I thought I was gonna love it as much as everyone else did but that's just not what happened. And that is the Beauty Bakery Flower Setting Powder. I feel like this setting powder is just raved about and the packaging is super cute. It comes in like a little flower bag. It's adorable. It goes with the whole theme of Beauty Bakery's brand and everyone says that it's a really good setting powder. It's not particularly cheap. I don't remember how much I paid for it because I bought it in San Francisco at the Ulta there and I just kind of went nuts shopping there so I don't remember the price of pretty much anything I got but I do remember it wasn't like particularly affordable and I thought that that was gonna be such a good powder I bought it because I needed a new face powder because I ran out of my Laura Mercier I know the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder is a product that a lot of people think is overhyped I am not one of those people because I personally love that setting powder so that's kind of what I was comparing it to going in and I just feel like that setting powder just emphasized my texture so much. Particularly in my under eye area, it just did not set my face nicely. I actually found it kind of broke up my foundation a little bit and I used it with multiple foundations. So I don't know what's wrong with me because everyone loves that product, but it just didn't work out for me and my skin type. However, I didn't dislike it enough to not use it. I used it up, so that's great. You also don't get a ton of product in it. Hold on. I will show you. So just for a quick comparison, this is the Beauty Bakery Flower Setting Powder. This is the setting powder I'm using right now, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Translucent Setting Powder. This one I don't really like either, honestly, but I feel like the Beauty Bakery one is more hyped up, so that's why I'm talking about this one. The size comparison. This one has 25 grams, this one has 12 and a half grams. But yeah, I'm glad this is gone. I would not purchase again, and I do not feel like it is worth the hype. You'll probably see that in an empties video coming up soon, and I'm just gonna explain that all over again. The next thing I wanna talk about are the Kylie Cosmetics Lip Kits. In particular, I'm talking about the matte lip kits. The velvet ones I actually do quite enjoy, but the matte ones are just nothing special in formula, and I feel like they were so hyped up. I wanted one so badly, and I wanted it mostly, honestly, because of the scent, and because all of these beauty YouTubers just made it seem like this liquid lipstick was life-changing, and it was just a liquid lipstick. I don't know. I feel like she's the one who started the whole craze about liquid lipsticks. She started that whole trend in like 2017, they were all the rage, but I just feel like it was just kind of an average matte liquid lipstick. It was really drying. The color range is phenomenal. I will give her that. And it's not like it's a bad product, but I just feel like for the amount of hype it got, it was fairly average. And I think that's because it's Kylie Jenner. Anything she slaps her name on is gonna sell well. So I think that's why. And I feel like that goes for like the brand as a whole. I do enjoy Kylie Cosmetics. Let me make that clear. But I just feel like a lot of their products, they're good. 
but they're not phenomenal like some people say they are. So I don't know, that's definitely one that I don't think is worth the hype or the price tag. If I'm just gonna go for like a matte liquid lipstick, I'll go for something from like, I don't know, even NYX. So many drugstore brands have similar formulas. Even ColourPop has a very similar formula. I know there's a whole conspiracy about that. So yeah, the matte liquid lipsticks, not my fave. The velvet liquid lipsticks, however, I really like those. Those are more my jam. They're more of a cream formula and I feel like they're more unique in the market. ColourPop has like the Lux Velvet liquid lipsticks, but it's not the same formula. It's not even really that similar. I feel like the Velvet liquid lipsticks are definitely like more of a unique product. But yeah, the matte ones, just not for me. The next product I wanna talk about is not cruelty free, but I did wanna talk about it because I tried it before I switched over to all cruelty free cosmetics. And I think when I was using it, it was technically cruelty free. It's by MAC. I'm not sure if you guys know, but MAC was cruelty free and then they started selling in China, which made them not cruelty free. So they kind of went backwards that way. Same with NARS. That's the next brand on this list too. The MAC Fix Plus. What's the hype about that? I don't understand. I feel like it's just scented glycerin water. It just doesn't do that much. It kind of melts everything into the skin, but it's kind of expensive for what it is. The nozzle isn't that great. I just don't understand why people love it so much. I think the reason people do love it so much is because MAC Fix Plus was a thing before for setting sprays were really a popular thing. So I feel like they kind of made their mark in the market before everyone else kind of got onto the setting spray bandwagon. So I feel like a lot of the Holy Grail Mac Fix Plus users were like from before setting spray was like a super popular product to purchase. And since the release of Mac Fix Plus, we have things like the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist, which I do feel like is a little bit overhyped, but I understand because I do really like that one. I feel like it's unique in the spray can. I don't love Morphe as a brand. I just think they're a little bit shady, but I do think that one product is pretty good. So I feel like the hype is more justified, but with Mac Fix Plus, it's just, I feel like it's just way too overhyped at this point. There are so many better options, especially ones that are more affordable. Especially for me, I'm an oily skinned gal, so MAC Fix Plus just makes me look like an oil slick. I'd rather use something like Urban Decay All Nighter or D Slick. Next up is by NARS, and it is the Orgasm Blush. I had this for so long, and this is kind of like one of the OG YouTuber faves. So I bought this back when they were cruelty free and back when I was not purchasing strictly cruelty free. I think I was like, 18 or 19, even maybe 17 when I purchased this. And I'm 25, almost 26 now for reference. I did not like it right from the beginning. I just felt like it was so glittery. And even still, I prefer more of a matte blush. I don't mind a little bit of like a sheen, but I just feel like that one, the gold is so apparent that it just looks like you're wearing gold shimmer on your cheeks. And I just didn't like that look even back then. I didn't really understand the hype about it. I still don't, especially the super orgasm shade. Don't get me started on that one. The formula is good. So I can see why people do like that formula, but I just, I just didn't like that color. It just was not flattering on my skin, especially because I'm so pale. And maybe that does have something to do with it because I'm so light, the gold sheen just like looks crazy on me. The next product I want to talk about, I actually want to show, it's the Morphe 35O. I decluttered this in my last video. Again, it's linked in the cards if you want to check it out. Why was everyone in love with this palette? All of the colors look the same, even me, like I'm guilty. Morphe sent it to me, but I was on the hunt. I wanted that palette so badly. And then when I got my hands on it, I realized, wow, this is a bunch of shades of brown with a couple pops of orange. Like this is, not a very appealing eyeshadow palette for me personally. I think I did like it at the time, but even at the time, I still didn't understand why it was so raved about. The shimmers are okay, but the mattes are just like not it. I just, I don't get it. Like they're not reflective at all. And I think when I finally got my hands on this, I was like, really? That's it? Everyone made this seem like it was the best thing ever and it just was not for me. Now if I'm gonna go neutral, I prefer something that's a lot more sparkly. I prefer like an eyeshadow topper kind of thing and mattes that are a lot more blendable. The mattes in that palette are so patchy. They're so tricky to work with, honestly. For me anyway, from what I remember, it's heavily expired so I haven't touched that palette in a long time. But from what I remember, the formula is not great. Okay, next up, I wanna talk about Too Faced a little bit. I asked my followers on Instagram 
Instagram products that they think are overhyped. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, I'll leave the link down below, just saying. I'm always on there and I'm always checking my DMs. So if you wanna chat with me, I would definitely recommend following me on there. So a lot of my followers on Instagram actually said this product too. It's the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. Why is this considered good? I feel like it just makes my lashes so freaking clumpy. A lot of my followers on Instagram said that they have a lot of smudging issues with that mascara as well. I personally don't have that problem, but it just makes my lashes stick to each other and make one giant lash. Like it's not a cute look in the slightest. I prefer more of a wet formula with a rubberized wand, if that gives you any context. And the Too Faced Better Than Sex, it's a wet formula, but the wand is just too big. I also have little eyes, so that could have something to do with it. But the wand is just too big and the bristles are too thick and get too saturated with the mascara. So even when I wipe it off on the sides to like get rid of some excess product, it just makes my lashes clump city, not cute, don't love. I did own that mascara and I did like it once it dried out a little bit. So that tells me that the formula is just too wet for my lashes and my personal liking. But I feel like everyone and their mom loves this. Like I felt like I was the only one who didn't like it. I don't know. My Instagram followers made me feel a little less alone when they said that they didn't understand the hype as well. Another product is the Too Faced Born This Way Original Foundation. I don't think this product is particularly bad, but I just don't think it's worth the hype. I mean, I guess that's what this whole video is, but I feel like so many people talk about this. A lot of the YouTubers that I watch talk about this foundation and I just don't see it. But yeah, maybe it's because my skin is oily, but even so, Jackie Ina talks about that foundation all the time and she's oily. So it must be just like not compatible with my skin. Maybe I'm not using it correctly for oily skin. I don't really know how to describe what it does to my skin. It kind of makes it look dry almost, even though I have oily skin. I don't really understand it. The Too Faced Born This Way Matte, I really like, but I find if I do have like any sort of texture on my skin, the original foundation can sometimes cling to it. Sometimes it doesn't do that. So maybe it's just not like playing nice with the other products I'm using that day. I don't really know, but it's just annoying that it can be so finicky. I don't really like products that are hit or miss, so I just kind of stick with what always looks good. And that foundation is just not it. It doesn't always look good on me. It's not the best product for my skin personally, and that's why I feel like it's overhyped. I do really like the multi-use sculpting concealer though. Ooh, another one that's gonna be a little bit controversial probably. I feel like all of my influencer friends go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs for Huda Beauties. I eyeshadow formula and I don't understand. I feel like her eyeshadow formula is really hard pressed, especially the mattes in particular, and I just don't love that. I find they're not the most pigmented, which isn't a problem, but I just wish they had like just a little more pigmentation because I find myself building it up and then blending it and it just kind of blends away. Hello? What's up, my sister? Hi, are you coming home? Uh, yeah, I'm in the car. Yay! Why are you coming home early? Because of the snow? Uh, but anyways, okay, I'll go unlock the door because I locked it because I heard a sound outside and I think it was just the snow plow, but I got scared. Okay, sorry if the lighting's changed. My roommate just got home and we chatted for quite a bit. So yeah, I have no idea where I was. I think I stopped at the Too Faced Born This... No, it was definitely the Huda Beauty palettes. I just find that her matte eyeshadow formula is really firmly pressed and I like something that's a little less pressed just so I can really pick up a lot of product if I want to and I just find them a little softer and more blendable and easier to work with. Not loose pressed but like a little looser and I find that sometimes her shimmers can be a little off par too. I know where all of my palettes are now because we organized them in my last video so I found everything really quick. For example this shade in the Emerald Obsessions palette you take a look it's just really not that pigmented i feel like a finger swatch like should do it justice as well like you can't even see it like where where's the shadow so i find that her formula is quite hit and miss this minty shade in the top as well not very pigmented at all i just would expect more because these palettes are not cheap for nine pans and i find that her shadow quality across the board is fairly inconsistent there are some amazing shades in here don't get me wrong and in her other palettes too there are some really beautiful shimmers and stuff like that but i just find that the mattes aren't as blended 
blendable as I'd like them to be, I'm not as pigmented, just not a fan of the formula. And then the shimmers, some are inconsistent and I don't like that. I don't know why people rave about them so much because of the inconsistencies. So honestly, I'm confused as to why my fellow influencers rave about them as much as they do. I don't know if it's just to like get on her PR list because honestly her PR list is pretty like prestigious I guess in the beauty community getting on Huda's PR list is like a big deal I think because she used to have like those extravagant packages and whatnot and because she's quite an expensive brand but yeah I just don't think her eyeshadow formula is worth the hype like at all hello which cat was that Deborah oh and Freddie's here too it's a party for my new viewers this is my cat Fred He's really cute. He's actually kind of ugly. He had eye surgery when he was younger, so that's why his eyes look kind of funky. And yeah, he's really sweet though. He's the best boy in the whole wide world. Aren't you? Yes, you're the best boy in the whole wide world. I just love you. He will sit like this all day, honestly. He does not care. <laughs> So cute, I love you. Okay, sorry about that. I feel like I've had so many distractions in this video. The whole point is, I don't think Huda Beauty's formula is worth the hype. Next up, oh, this is a good one. I feel like everyone loves this product except for me. It is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. This made every foundation that I love go on so patchy and I tried it so many different ways. I followed the directions. I tried it so many times with different products, different foundations, and I just couldn't get it to work for me. I found it would stick in some places and then not in others even though I applied like an even layer or like applied it to the best of my abilities and yeah it would just make every single foundation really patchy and I don't like that but I feel like everyone loves the Hydro Grip Primer and everyone claims that it makes their foundation stay on amazing and I just don't feel that way. I'm glad I just tried a trial size instead of investing in a full size because I was able to determine that I did not like it and it is not worth the hype for me personally. If you have any tips on making that primer work for you you, let me know in the comments down below because I really do want to love it. It's one of those products I really like milk and I'm really rooting for them, but that was just not a hit for me. Next up, I've talked about this a couple times on my channel. I think it was like in my disappointing products video or something, but the Hourglass Vanish Foundation Stick, I hate it. I hate it so much. I don't understand how anyone could like it. It just makes my skin look so cakey with one layer. Everyone loves this foundation. Everyone. I feel like it must be me applying it wrong or something. I don't know, but I cannot get that to work for me. And it hurts my heart a little bit because it was so expensive like so crazy expensive so I don't know it just it was a fail for me like a big fail that is like one of the most disappointing products I think I've ever tried I don't get how it can look so incredibly beautiful on someone and then so incredibly awful on me now I have two skincare products that I want to talk about the first is the Tatcha water cream I feel like everyone and their mom loves this and I just don't even though I have oily skin and it's supposed to be like a really lightweight moisturizer I find when I rub it in I don't know if this is the point but I don't like it for me personally. When you rub it in, it just kind of disappears and feels like water. Like you just splashed your face with a bit of like water. As you rub it in, it just kind of disappears into nothing, I feel like. And I think that's the whole point. And I think some people like that, but I kind of like to feel a little bit of the product on my skin, not too much, but I like to feel like it's doing something. The water cream just disappears so quickly that I just feel like there's no possible way my skin could benefit from this, like it's already gone, you know what I mean? But I get how some people, if you like hate the feeling of product on your skin, I feel like then it would be a good option and I understand why people like it in that regard, it's just kind of like a difference of opinion. On the opposite end of the spectrum, one that I hate for a similar reason, the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask. This was sold out for so long on Sephora and I finally got to try it and I hated it because it felt so thick and sticky on the skin. As I mentioned previously, I like to feel the product on my skin, but I like to feel it in a way that isn't bothersome and I find that that mask made my face so sticky that my hair would stick to it and it would just feel gross and I felt like I couldn't sleep with it on because it just, it felt disgusting and I just never reached for that product. I just, I hated the feeling of it so much. I couldn't even wear it for like 15 minutes as like a quick mask. I kind of rest my face on my chin a lot. I'm kind of always touching my face. I know it's bad, but I just kind of do it. It's just, it's not my fault, okay? I'm anxious and I just like, I don't know. And I couldn't sleep in it, let alone wear it for 15 minutes. So I feel 
like that product just like was not it for me. I actually don't know why people love it because I feel like my skin couldn't get any benefits from it because I was like physically unable to leave it on for long enough. I just could not stand the feeling that much. And that was the last product I had on my list. Let me know what products you think are super overhyped. I know a couple of my followers said the KVD Vegan Beauty Tattoo Liner. I didn't add that to my list because I love it personally. The Laura Mercier Translucent Powder was another one that was mentioned a lot. Again, another one I personally love, so I didn't mention it. And yeah, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you don't, that's okay. I just really appreciate you being here. It really helps my channel out just by you watching, so thank you. Please leave any video requests in the comments down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!